In this video, I will be giving an overview of CSTRs and how they differ to simpler batch reactors. Continuous stirred tank reactors, or CSTRs for short, are the most basic continuous reactors used in chemical processes. How do CSTRs work? CSTRs are very similar to batch reactors in the sense they contain the four main components, the vessel, the reaction medium, headspace and agitation. You can have one CSTR running or several CSTRs connected in series. The reactants are continuously added and products are continuously removed. CSTRs are run at steady state and a uniform composition is assumed throughout each reactor. What type of reactions can you carry out in CSTRs? Like batch reactors, CSTRs can accommodate a whole range of chemical reactions and are commonly used in industrial processing where constant agitation is required. Are they scalable? Reactions in CSTRs are generally scalable and reactor volumes with tens of thousands of litres are common and are comparatively cheap to construct. However, scaling up requires some investment in research and piloting. How well can you control the reaction? A single CSTR suffers from relatively slow heat and mass transfer. Also, residence time control is poor. Each molecule does not necessarily flow through the reactor at the same rate but a series of CSTRs can be connected for better control over residence time. Agitation is a really important part of the CSTR. A variety of stirring impellers are available. However, even with the best impellers, dead zones where no mixing occur will still exist. What about energy efficiency? CSTRs are more energy efficient than batch reactors. This is because the reaction is continuous and there isn't the need to go through empty fill and heat up cycles. And lastly, for catalytic reactions, what is the catalyst lifetime? A wide range of catalysts can be used in CSTRs, such as heterogeneous catalysts, which are solid catalysts in a liquid reaction medium, homogeneous catalysts, where both catalyst and reaction medium are in the liquid phase, or even biological catalysts such as enzymes. Because of the continuous operation, the lifetime of the catalyst is not so limited by the reactor compared to batch processes. However, because the catalysts are often small particles, or even liquids, separation of the catalysts is still an issue. To summarise CSTRs, hopefully you have a better understanding of continuous stirred reactors now. We have given the reactor a subjective score based on our experience. Scope. For scope, the CSTR is excellent as a wide range of reactions can be carried out in them. Scalability is good. Again, this is similar to batch. There can be challenges, but these can be easily addressed. Reaction control is average. CSTRs do suffer from mass transfer limitations due to their geometry. In addition, residence times often have broad distributions because all molecules do not spend the precise time in the reactor. Energy efficiency is much improved over the batch reactor. This is due to the continuous flow of reaction medium, which avoids heating cycles. The catalyst lifetime is poor as the catalyst suffers from attrition, which is where it is broken down to smaller particles. This is the same as in batch reactors. What's more, the continuous nature of the process results in the catalyst removal well before it is fully utilised. Batch reactors currently dominate fine and complex chemical manufacturing due to their low cost and simplicity compared to CSTRs. Nevertheless, CSTRs are one of the most used continuous flow reactors used in industry. So, if you want to learn more about other types of reactors, check out our other videos here. And to see what else we get up to, be sure to visit our website.